Welcome, you guys. I'm Jay. Um, I'm uh, actually a pastor. Don't hold that against me. Um, but I've been in East Village for two years, and uh, we started a space called J Street Commons. And uh, there's, I don't know if you guys have been to Genteel Coffee before, but Genteel's in there. We also have Bradley Mountain, uh, which is a local company in East Village, and you're going to be hearing from their founder here pretty soon. Um, but my daughter actually went to E3, and uh, we've kind of known for a long time about E3 and, and what you guys stand for. And we just love the school. Um, we see you guys all the time outside walking to school and uh, doing gym and stuff like that. And it's, it's pretty awesome uh, to see you guys in the neighborhood. And so I guess um, perhaps you're wondering, okay, why are we doing this? And I would say it's probably just twofold. It's two things. Um, we want you to feel seen. Um, I hope you guys know that for us, um, like for me as, as a dad and as kind of like a, uh, uh, an entrepreneur myself, I, I see you guys as the future. I see you guys as people who are players and that the ideas you're having, the dreams that you're dreaming and even just the hard work you're putting into your life right now at school and, and that you're gonna put in at college and whatever you do, um, that is huge and it has inestimable potential. And so like we just wanted as a neighborhood, as East Village to just come around you guys and say, we see you, we love the innovation you guys are stepping into and I'm so excited to hear from you guys on that front. Um, Melissa has already shared with me several things that you guys have designed uh, that are particularly directed at healing the world. And so, so excited. You guys are the leaders of, of the world. Secondly, um, we, we not only want to see you, we want to step alongside you. Um, you have incredible teachers and coaches at E3, and we could never take their, their place. But we just want you to know you're surrounded by a community. Uh, in East Village, there's a lot of creative types. There's a lot of entrepreneurs, and you're going to hear from a couple of them. And we just want you guys to know that we're here for you. Um, we want to come alongside you, encourage you, uh, coach you up, help you feel like big and bad so that you can do incredible things in the world today. So um, that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa, and then she's going to introduce you guys as the scholars who are going to be presenting. And then after that, uh, I'll introduce our two entrepreneurs. Okay, everybody, hello. E3 Civic High is an innovative public high school with an award-winning campus located in the San Diego Central Downtown Library. We are passionate about engaging, educating, and empowering our scholars to make them college and career competitive. At E3, we are finding new ways to engage and challenge our scholars through personalized methods, such as developing solutions to real world problems through the design thinking process. Our scholars are equipped to move beyond basic levels of education and to a place of innovation so that they can become global competitive and ready to collaborate in the workplace. Today, you'll hear from three of our senior design thinking groups, Infinity Clip, Happy Band, and Rescue Bear. And so we ask that you hold your questions until all three groups have presented. Thank you so much. So Infinity okay. Clip, you go ahead and share your screen. Could we start? Yes. Yep, go for it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Infinity Clip presentation. This is our team, Angelica Torres, Shalon Diaz, me, Uriel Torres, and Christina Arias. Have you ever been lost? Close your eyes. Now imagine being lost downtown San Diego gas lamp quarter, one of the busiest streets in San Diego. Not knowing where you are, you cannot see, and your anxiety levels are increasing. 
you do and you do not have a cell phone. This is exactly what people who are blind and are visually impaired face every single day when they travel to unfamiliar places. This is what Diana experiences every day when she goes somewhere unfamiliar. Diana Sling is a 49-year-old woman who attends the Community Center for the Blind every day. Ever since she became blind, things became more challenging for her, especially because she doesn't have a cell phone. Every day, Diana has to get around with nothing but her walking stick, the white king. There is anxiety and stress running through her mind as she walks up to the crosswalk and begins to cross. On top of that, she doesn't on top of that, she doesn't know where she is because she can't see. This has to be one of her worst fears that she has to live with for the rest of her life. Blindness means being unable to see due to disease, injury, or genetics. You're considered legally blind if you cannot see 20 to 200 with glasses or contacts. Visual impairment means vision loss by usual means and has moderate to severe cases. 26.9% of the U.S. population is blind or visually impaired. Of that, 16.5% make less than $75,000 a year. 12.9% live at or below the poverty level, and because of this, they need an affordable option. Our solution is the Infinity Clip, a compact circular GPS tracker. The Infinity Clip uses a GPS chip that will take satellite information to determine the user's location. It uses voice command so the users can receive instructions on how to get to a destination and has the ability to describe their surroundings. The Infinity Clip, know where you are at all times. The clip doesn't require the use of a cell phone. The speaker is used to communicate with the clip, such as asking for directions or area specifications. The camera is used to point at any building, street sign, or object in front of you. This is a geofencing device. Geofencing uses the exact location as a virtual perimeter. There is also a charging port on the back of the clip, and the volume buttons are located on the back. So now when Diana leaves the house, she can either clip on the infinity clip onto her shirt, jacket, and or pants. To activate the clip, simply press the text tile. Then she can simply ask, where am I? The clip will then use a geofencing location to give specific directions. The infinity clip will help lower the anxiety and stress she has from being lost. Now Diana can truly know where she's at at all times. Compared to the competitors, Ira, Be My Eyes, and the Smart Cane, the Infinity Clip is affordable, easy to use, doesn't require a cell phone, is portable, and doesn't have a time limit. The cost of the materials is $51. That includes a GPS tracker, 3D printing materials, and the D-Clips. The cost of overhead is $26, and there's a 20% markup. We anticipate the cost of the Infinity Clip to be $100. With mass production, the price will go down. Next, we want to create five beta prototypes to send to our end users to receive feedback and finalize our final, our final prototype. We were also part of Project Invent where we had the opportunity to compete with different students around the world. Our group took first place with the grand prize of $2,500. Are we muted? That's incredible, you guys. Um, Melissa, go ahead. Can we have Happy Band share their screen and get ready to present, please? Hi, can everyone hear us and see the screen? Okay, cool. Medium, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you for being here and welcome. We'll be introducing you to the Happy Band. I'm Claire. I'm Miriam. 
So it all started with the story of Jesus. Jesus was a former foster child. He entered a foster care at the age of eight. And he experienced many movements from home to home about eight to 12 times. I remember when I was interviewing Jesus on this topic, his facial expression changed dramatically. And the atmosphere just got really quiet. Um, it only took him a while to speak up again. He said that it was really awful and terrible experience. He had to adapt to different environments constantly and that led him having trouble opening up to others and also develop uh, serious trouble controlling his emotions. So he had tried to reach out to social workers at the foster care. However, they didn't do much help. And it was at that moment I decided that we'll try our best. My team and I will try our best to help Jesus and others that go through similar struggles. That's it. So Unfortunately, Jesus is not alone. There are many other foster children that are suffering similar difficulties and hardships. And what I have on the screen is three out of many. These are constant movement from home to home, feeling homesick and waiting for adoption. These will add on to their stress level. And um, on top of that, um, they have, they probably, uh, went through some misfortune and trauma when they entered the foster care. Uh, what, I, what I mean by that is that reasons that they were moved out from their original homes. And these are the top three are neglect, which is as high as 61%, drug abuse, parents, and caretaker inability to cope. Here I have a chart on <clears throat> the mental health status in the foster care versus the general population. Yes. As you can see, um, the situation is a lot worse in the foster care. The blue bars are representing the foster care and all these mental illnesses um, happen, uh, the blue bars happen to be longer than the red bars representing general population across the whole chart. And that really shows how serious mental health supports need to be looked at and um, improvements on. So that's why we decided to create the Happy Band to help those children. Yes, the Happy Band promotes happiness and positive emotions and behavior. The Happy Band has special personalized features such as buses, contact lists, and message that they have the intention of giving encouragement and a low stress level for the user. So how will these features help? The, um, the color change and bus feature gives an immediate reminder to the user to stay positive and regulate their emotions. And the um, personalized message symbol or phrase feature gives encouragement to the user and helps them bring them joy and bring comfort. Lastly, the personalized contact list provides options on who the user will most likely reach out to at a difficult time, so they can have someone to keep on company. So here we're taking a look at the competitor matrix alongside Happy Band, our Headspace, and Calm. These are two very successful meditation apps. However, um, Happy Band surpassing areas such as um, immediate help and personalized features. So what is um, the exact, what is really the total number of children in the foster care in the US? It is about 400,000 plus and as high as 80% of those children suffer from mental health illness. We use that information to create our business plan. So after some research, the estimated cost for one happy event is about $30 and eventually we would like to get it for all US users, which is about 320,000 people. This is the total number of children suffering from mental, mental illness in the foster care system. And what will we do beyond what we have right now? Um, we will start with building prototypes and reach out to community partners to test out the happy band on our end users, which is foster children, and eventually raise enough money to get our first patch of users. And we'll like to start with building five prototype happy bins. And it's a little bit underestimated, but we're thinking of $150 in funding. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you.
That's incredible, you guys. This is high-tech stuff. Love it. Okay, our last group, Rescue Bear, can you go ahead and present? Hi, welcome. Rescue Bear by Sabrina Marino, Alexis de Grandpa, and Jose Asipto. We are creating an outlet for children who are built for being bullied in the form of a bear. The problem. A lot of children go through bullying on a daily and parents are unaware of this. The ages that we are targeting are children who are mostly in elementary and middle school. The outcome is that most children commit suicide if not dealt with properly. Our expert told us a story about a middle school girl who left school for a week because of being bullied and harassed by her classmates. One week later, when she comes back, the same thing happened to her, but this time she was harassed by staff members. A nine-year-old boy who lived in Colorado took his own life days after entering the fourth grade. The young boy recently came out as gay to his mother. She believed this had a major role in his death. The boy recently been bullied by a group of children the year prior. The same group began to grow meaner once the boy came out. Even though the numbers of suicide are not high for the ages of 13 and under, children are more likely to commit an impulsive decision, which plays a big role in the suicidal behavior of the young minds not thinking through their actions. Young people, specifically from the grade six to 12, have reported to experience some sort of bullying, and most of them are unaware that it's going on until it gets physical. So our solution is to spread awareness on negative things that are going on in the life of children. So in order to uh, improve communication between them and their parents, overall, just eliminating minor parts of like depression and preventing a buildup on suicide. Why our product is better. And this is our product. We keep your kids safe. Our product is unique because it keeps it sends the children's conversation to a hotline when they use keywords such as bullying, suicide, help, etc. The conversation is first sent to the hotline and if they feel there is any danger to the child, the parents are informed. This helps a lot of children from avoiding suicide while other products can't provide that for you. Our products helps everyone stay safe. Our price is fair. We don't charge for any extra things you would like to add. We keep our price at a minimum since we do include a lot other companies can't give you, such as hotline connection, stuffing of eco-safe beans, and voice recording included. Whereas in other places, it's at least $10 for each add-on. So our bear of would be like $12, and that's just an empty bear. We use eco-safe friendly beans, the poly pellets, and the pack of six pounds is worth $25. And if we were to use a pound per bear, we would divide 25 by six and we'd get like $4.2. So each bear would have $4.2 worth of beads in it, plus the bear itself. And then everything else, like the voice box and the connection to the hotline and things like that. Our competition. The closest competition we have is Builder Bear. The bear itself is $16.50 without the add-ons or the stuffing or accessories. The recording of your voice is an add-on to $8, and if you want it in the shape of a heart, it's $6. Builder Bear is not connected to a hotline, unlike our product. We save more money with our products since we add more features and don't charge for any add-ons. The total roughly goes from $40 for a Builder Bear. Where, our, where ours is $55 per, to our product due to the high technology and eco-friendly beef. Our next steps. We plan to visit the various schools our expert told us about. We want to be able to know if this has any effect on children whatsoever and move forward with it. And that's it. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you guys that's for skating. That's unbelievable, you guys. Mind-blowing. You guys are killing it. Love what you're doing. Love how it helps people. And love how innovative it is. So um, we're going to hear from a couple of our innovators 
today um, and they're just going to kind of speak encouragement over you guys and uh, kind of encourage you to keep doing what you're already doing at pretty high levels, huh? I mean, this is really cool stuff. Um, so I hope you guys uh, can just uh, feel comfortable. Um, I'm going to invite on Tyler uh, Axtell. He's the founder of Bradley Mountain. Um, and Bradley Mountain is a company in East Village um, centered in Moniker Warehouse. And um, Tyler, why don't you just kind of tell us uh, a quick story about how you got started, man? Hey, guys. Um, thanks for letting me be here. Uh, so I have a business on 17th Street, not too far down the street, and um, it's right by the 94 freeway. Yeah. Uh, I started my business eight years ago, and it started out of um, just a hobby. It wasn't a business plan. It wasn't something that I really thought I would be doing, because to be honest, I didn't think I could do it mm -hmm. um, full time, but I loved leather working I started um, my friend showed me how to make a guitar strap and from there I was just so inspired by how the leather aged and I loved the durability of it because there's so much stuff out there that you can buy that's just cheap and it falls apart so I got really excited about leather work and I just started making wallets and bags uh, well just started with wallets in my garage and I would make one, give it to a friend, get their feedback, and then, uh, you know, make more. So I started selling them to my friends and family, and then it started to s just snowball. People were like, oh my gosh, this stuff is so cool. I gotta, I gotta get my own. And uh, so I started getting really busy, and I actually ended up getting so busy that I had to move out of my garage and actually rent out a space and like quit my job. And so it just started with something so little. Yeah. So small. Just a craft yeah. that I was doing. Yeah. And, and it, but it was a long and hard process to learn it and get better at it. But I, it kept bringing me back cause I just thought it was, um, it's just unique, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I love working with my hands. And so, I loved just getting better and seeing my own progress in it. Um, so I was, I'm from Ventura and which is like three and a half hours North. And I moved down to San Diego to go to college. And when I moved, I was thinking to myself, I'd love to have a cool backpack to take with me to school, just something to help me stand out and just let my personality show. And so my mom actually helped me uh, learn how to sew because all of my leatherworking was like by hand. So I, I bought a industrial sewing machine and started putting um, a bag together with her help and used that on campus. And um, that got a lot of attention and uh, my friends started asking me to make them bags. So that's where it kind of went from just wallets to bags, right. which takes up more space. Yeah. And so, Again, I got pushed to, to make that decision to actually turn it into a business. Mm. And I remember one time I was in my garage uh, at the time making a bag. It was like my third bag that I had ever made. And I didn't have my mom's help. It, I was all on my own. And I actually had someone say like, I'll buy it from you if you make me one. So I went and bought the materials and I spent like all the money I had Cha -ching. Yeah, yes. um, on the leather because it's expensive. Yeah. And I'm like sitting there trying to figure out how to use the sewing machine. And if any of you guys have used sewing machines, they're tricky if, if you're not experienced. And the, the thread tension was off and I just did not know what I was doing. And I actually got really frustrated and I threw the bag out into the street <laughs> and um like a i was just being childish yeah. and uh i kind of sat down and i was just discouraged and i was like man this is way harder than i thought mm -hmm. like the process of manufacturing and like actually putting my hand to this task and living it out is way harder than i i ever thought and i had this turning point where I could kind of just give up and call the customer and say, Hey, I don't think it's going to happen, but I just didn't feel like I was ready to, to let it go. So I, 
I walked out into the street and like cars are going around me and I picked up the bag and I didn't have enough money to um, buy new materials. So I actually like tore the threads out and restarted and I made the bag, I finished it and it wasn't the best backpack I ever made, but it got done. And that was a huge turning point for me. Ever since then, I've just been running for it and just just going for it and and taking risks and putting my own money back into the business and hiring my friends to help work with me um and so now we it's been eight years we have a workshop in uh east village and a little retail store um when all this covid stuff's over you guys can come visit and check it out um so I wanted to show you guys one of the first bags I made. Um, this is it right here. So it's kind of like, if you you can't really see it too close. For, oh, there we go. Um, but it's very crudely made. I'll fold it back here. Um, and I don't know, it's just not perfect. And that, my point is to show you that it all starts somewhere. And um, it, uh, yeah, if we can get like detail on it. This, like, I didn't even know how to put this pocket on properly. Some of you guys probably know even better than I do <laughs> at this point, but um, it was just crudely made, and um, but it still uh, works, you know? And my, my sister used it for school for a couple years, and um, it's just cool to be able to look back on some of the things that started me off, so. Yeah, and you know that kind of leads into something we were talking about before. These guys have ideas, and they're really great ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you like we just want to say that we, you guys, like you, you not letting go of your dreams, you guys not letting stuff like COVID nineteen stifle um, a sense of hope in you, is huge because because your hope is kind of that kind of fuel behind the dreams that are inside of you that the world desperately needs you to go after and realize. So if you're, if you're speaking to them and you want to just give them a word of wisdom on how to just kind of realize their dreams, how to go for it and see these things become realities, what would you say? Yeah, I, first off, I am so inspired by what you guys presented. I love the compassion that you guys have on vulnerable uh for vulnerable people and i love that you're using technology and that your smartest brain muscle to solve those problems and i i hope these actually happen because these are like yeah all amazing ideas um so thanks for sharing that i'm, I'm inspired yeah. um i i would say there's kind of three things that i um would how are we on time are we okay Good. Yeah. Um, I'd say the three kind of three things that I would say are my like core beliefs in in how to be successful is uh, hard work is the number one. I think that the the laws of nature or of God or how however you want to say it. I think that the world opens up to people that work hard and I think opportunities open up for people that work hard and persevere. So um I would say, and, and in our generation, we don't have very hard working, a very hard working culture, um, people my age um, especially. And so um, when you can work hard, you stand out above the rest and you, you're actually going to like go a lot farther than a lot of people just by, by being focused. Um, the second thing is just being true to yourself. Um, I think that we all get to see people really inspiring, like some of these ideas um, that I'm seeing, I'm like, oh my gosh, it would be so cool to get into that because I'm so inspired and it's so good to draw from other people. But I do think it's important to remember who you are and who your, what your dreams are and the things that get you excited. Because if you lose that, mm. the world loses something yeah. because we all need to live into the things that we're created to do. If, if no one did what Jay does, there wouldn't be a J here. Um, and so uh, that's the other thing. And the last nugget I'll leave with you is, um, what was it? <laughs> I told you earlier. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It was a good one, too. Um, I have it on a note. 
Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, just always learning, always being a learner. Um, if you guys can, can, as you get into your careers and you get really good at something and you're becoming a master at what you do, um, there's this temptation to always <coughs> try to be teaching other people because you're so good at it. Um, but if you can hang on to the idea that you can learn from other people, no matter how good you are at what you do, um, you'll be able to absorb from the world um, what other people have to teach you. And if, if you walk with humility in your career, you're going to learn um, so much and you'll actually be able to pivot through big changes, like even like this COVID thing, because your eyes are open to what opportunities could come at you. So. Thanks, brother. That was huge. Um, I know Tyler's heart is to be there for you guys. So um, if you guys, any of you um, student scholars want to make contact with him, is it cool if I uh, pass along your email to them? Absolutely. And just reach out and, and get um, special help. Um, thanks, dude. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having me. me. Yeah. I'm going to introduce uh, uh, our new presenter, Jeffrey Brown. Uh, Jeffrey is the founder of Studio 710, Tallgrass Productions, and most recently, Isola Bakery. This guy is literally doing everything, and we're actually coming to you live from his studio. So uh, give it up for Jeffrey Brown. <laughs> hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Th thanks so much for uh, getting the Zoom for us, and uh, I'm going to pull this out so I'm hearing a little feedback. Um, I, I just wanted to say to y'all first, congratulations. Those were some tight, some tight, tight presentations. You guys did a lot of work on those, a lot of thinking, a lot of heart went into it, and you know, I really applaud you for looking out, searching your own hearts, and then looking into your communities to see where the need is, and I think that's, uh, you know, really commendable. Uh, um, a little bit like quickly about me but before we do that I, I would like to open this for some questions at the end so I'm just gonna talk for a minute or two and then I'd like to hear from you guys and the question that I'm gonna put out there is what obstacles are standing in your way and, and so we're gonna turn the cameras back on you guys in a minute but I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about my journey so um, I, I started out as a, a, um, a kid growing up on a farm in Kansas and um, I, it was a very cool place to grow up but a very small place i had no idea that you could be an inventor or a photographer or anything but the like the normal work a day kind of stuff you know and and so uh, it was really cool for me to get out in the wider world and to see and learn a little bit about what was going on out there and i ended up um becoming a photographer about 25 years ago now and I was able to spend a lot of time from everything from presidents or presidential candidates down to folks on the street who were trying to get uh, radishes to grow in their gardens. So it was a very, it was a, it was a great way to see the world. And, and so what I've done since then is uh, to uh, create a space in the East Village here that's right near your school. And uh, it's a place where people can gather um, in this space. And it's, it's, it's all around us right here. We're sitting in the middle of it. So, and I wanted to create a community space where people could get together and have, you know, church services like second sunday that um that jay and his and his community meet here to we have um netflix you know comes in here and has movie stars come in for comic con uh two folks come in here and got married or have uh, quinceaneras or other parties you know so it's 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 fun to really like share that out um and in the past a couple of months you guys have obviously noticed i mean COVID has really changed the outlook of our lives it's changed it's changed that the way we live every single day and and so um i've been thinking about you know, the event business is gone the photo business is gone right now so as a as a business owner i'm like okay how do i pivot and use the resources that i have now and, and do something that conforms to my own integrity that is so that I something I believe in something I'm interested in so um, Jay mentioned that uh, that uh, I just launched a bakery if in the past really two and a half weeks called Isola and it's at isolabakery.com you guys can see it and much like you know you guys uh, like I had n no experience baking professionally I've been cooking at home for a while. I just started doing it, and I love I love that feeling of putting a hot loaf of bread in, in people's hands and seeing them tear a piece off or cut a piece off and just be like, 
Mm, yeah, that's so tasty. So, so for me, that was an interesting idea. And I can tell you that I didn't do nearly as much research and hard work as you guys did thinking about like all of the <laughs> stuff that needed to get it going. I was just like, I'm going to do this, man. I'm going to do it. And, it. and if it fails, then it fails. And I, I mean that only in the best sense of the word in that I believe failure is important. I believe it's important to set yourself up so the consequences of that failure are not catastrophic, but you guys latch on. Like, like I did, I latch on to an idea. I figure out how, how to bootstrap it on a shoestring in the sense that I started baking in my uh, home kitchen over here and I got a permit from the city and I, I basically had the cost of flour and my time and that launched the bakery and it's been very uh, i'm very i'm very happy i'm very humbled to uh, see the community come around that and um so it's been a, it's been a lot of fun where is it going to be in five years i i don't I, I don't know so um that's kind of m my entrepreneurial sort of story and bent and and one thing that i would recommend and you guys may already know this resource but on national public radio there's a show called how i built this and I listen to it while I'm out jogging or just like walking around in the park with uh, my family or something sometimes. And it's inspiring stories of people who started businesses and uh, uh, about things that they are passionate about, you know, and from anything from makeup, from skincare to computers to um, clothing, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting to hear how they started it. Like some of them raised venture capital and raised tens of millions of dollars others started stowing, sewing stuff in their own garages and you know other uh, other like like literally like started making the stuff by hand and just like relied on their communities to help raise them up because they believed in the product so i don't know if you guys are down for it and i'm sort of deviating from the script and i don't know how much time we have but i would love to hear from you guys like what questions you have and What's what you feel like is standing from your way in your way for launching either this business that you guys have had that you did your decks with, or some other business that you're um, you're interested in. So, uh, is yep. anybody? Yeah, there we go. Thanks. I can see everyone. I can see you all now. So just raise your hand, and we'll just like have our operator just like turn unmute you, or we can unmute everyone. Let's just have a conversation. And can you go to the wide shot, please, Rory? on us so I can see Jay too. Yeah, so what kind of uh, barriers? Yeah, what's obstacles? standing in your way? What's standing in your yeah. way? What do you guys feel like is the impossible obstacle in front of you to see your dreams come true? And, and Rory, can you unmute everyone, please? I think you can do it. Uh, like in, in mass. Anybody? Angelica, Elijah, Aaron, Miriam, Paul, talk to me. Melissa, I think for our group, for Infinity Clip, what's been hard is making the 3D model of our project because we can't, lots of us don't know how to do that. So I've been working on it, looking at YouTube tutorials, looking at all this stuff, talking to experts, and then also being able to kind of print it. We now have to, we couldn't go to school and do it anymore. We now have to send it off or do something different to figure it out. So COVID has kind of limited us and also our knowledge on certain things. It's kind of hard, but we're powering through it. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that's a great example of what I think is the most important part of, of, of being a successful entrepreneur is just not stopping. You keep going and like something will get in your way and you just keep like pushing the rock a little bit more forward you know and the computer doesn't work and so you have to figure out how to like get some parts for it or you need to look at a youtube and i have to tell you like for the baking thing like i, I was literally like baking and i've got like an ipad there with like recipes and youtube like how do you laminate butter into croissants and i'm just like i don't know i don't know and and, and so that was really fun to unlock it but you know but but yeah that, angelica that's a that's a great job and i think it's so important just to like don't quit. Just keep pushing. How about Alexis? I bet you got a question. I could see you there. Hi. Um, I guess one of the struggles is trying to find a bear that would uh, compensate for the mass of the beef that we were looking for. 
and the size, the proper size to hold one. There were many different sizes of teddy bears. And we wanted one that would just fit right for the scholar, whoever was using it, and to have it in the studio space. That doesn't take up much space, but you see it there and it's catching to the eye. Mm. Yeah, that's that, that's awesome. Y you know, it it it's amazing when we have a passion for an idea, how it drives us and it kind of marinates in our brain as we're like, you know, cooking dinner or you know playing with our brothers and sisters or doing whatever we're doing it just can sit in there and just kind of like just keep thinking about it and the ideas and inspiration comes who knows when you know you might be like taking out the trash or something <laughs> but but and what about now like what's for you guys for your team what's what's standing in your way from here like what to the next step like i mean do you have the money you need to do your prototypes do you have do you have people other entrepreneurs who are uh willing to mentor you or help you get it in stores or uh, you know or get it out to your test group or we do have a mentor her name is Tracy. she's from play it safe he was recently on um i believe his name was dr phil and she was just showing like different ways to help prevent bullying in form of self-defense but she was probably one of our main sources to get our item out there she is in contact with some elementary schools that we might partner up with to experiment with our rescue bear and to see how our data will go. Yeah, and remind me, what um, what, what what's the seed money uh, amount you need to to get to to build your prototype or types? Um, it's roughly about to make the whole thing. It was. It is. Uh -huh. Well, we nice don't, forehead. We don't know. The, <laughs> Just remember, everybody's unmuted here, so uh, uh, we can hear we can hear everybody. And thank you. I do I do have a nice forehead. <laughs> go. Sorry, Alexis. Hey. Go ahead. It's okay. It's gonna be roughly around a hundred dollars, maybe if more. Uh -huh. um, probably like one fifty. That's rest. Nice. Nice. Well, <laughs> I'll put up seventy five if you will, Jay. What do you think? Done. Done. All right. We'll get you we'll get you the money so you guys can go. Yeah. All right. Like who else? Um Roy, can you bring up the big screen so I can see everybody? All right. Uh hey, who, who else has got a question? Sabrina, uh Chelon uh, uh Um How about you? Oriel? Claire, are you there? Oh yeah, I'm here. Oh, oh yeah, go Claire. Uh, I was just going to talk about like obstacles we're facing right now. So um, what we're planning on doing next is definitely building a prototype. But just like what Angelica had brought up, it's kind of like difficult during this time. Like um, it would definitely be great if we could like get together with our, our team and then work on our prototype. Like, um, you know, everyone like discussing all together because it's definitely not like in the field of our expertise because it has a lot to do with technology but recently we have gotten to contact with this um um expert and we have scheduled a meeting with him to um get feedback sorry <laughs> get feedback from him and also like he'll help us with like the technology part and stuff yeah so i, I yeah, think that, yeah that's awesome i, I wonder like if we now think of Zoom and COVID as an opportunity, like I heard on how I built this, um, the guy who founded WordPress, um, and and they have I think five thousand employees working all over the world in distributed, basically working from home. They don't have offices, so he one of the quotes that he said that and and, don't, and this is not verbatim, but he's like, don't waste, you know, a, a, a calamity. Don't waste like a tough situation it's like this you can you can take this COVID thing and 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 use it to help you in some ways i mean it's obviously got some sad parts and we grieve for those people and we feel for it but it's almost like you now have because everyone's so used to getting on zoom it's like a thing now i mean it's like you could reach out to people like experts to help you think about the manufacturing and 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 the engineering and stuff i mean they could be in England, they could be in Africa, they could be in Australia, they can be in South Asia, uh, you know, and now it's just as easy to talk to them. In fact, easier than to talk to a, a professor at City College who you used to see face to face. And, you know, and I totally get you like face to face is the, the way to go. 
it's awesome to have that personal connection but it's like if we can expand our minds and be like send an email to somebody who's at uh you know a oxford university you know you might be able to get them to help you too and just hop on zoom and do the same kind of thing so yeah i you i think i can attest to that you guys would be surprised who will respond to you um and and they're responding to to your your creativity they're responding to your leaning into life leaning into problems and coming up with solutions like people dig that and they will they will not just throw their time at it but they'll even resource it so um yeah don't be shy you guys like take these send send crazy emails to really uh, amazing people and just see what happens yeah it's amazing like i'm very much in the same situation as you guys in the sense in the baking world it's like nobody knows me I don't really know how to bake. I make I make two things well. I make sourdough bread pretty well, and I make croissants pretty well. And, and I called. I sent I sent an email to get to talk to somebody like a famous <laughs> <pastry> <laughs> <chef> <laughs> in in, uh, in Europe. And I was like, yeah, he's ne- he probably won't answer, but maybe he will, you know. And. I, I, I got his phone number and I got on the phone with him and I talked to him and he was like super nice and he was like, oh, send me your YouTube channel. I want to check out what you're doing. And he's like giving me all these ideas for like how to scale it from literally stuff that's being made in my own kitchen to basically take it up to be a, a, a bakery that can really serve the community. Mm. And I was just like, wow, so cool, you know. So how are we doing timing? Do, do we have another time for a couple more questions? Because I would love to hear from anybody who's got thumping. Want to do one more question? Sure. Benjamin, what are you doing there? <laughs> how about Aaron? We have a few people on the that are some of the scholars at E3, and some of the instructors have come on. And so um, those are the ones that you were talking about. And so I think you've heard from Happy Ban in um, Infinity Clip and then Rescue Bear. Um, the, the other scholars and the instructors are listening in on the presentation. Oh, cool. Awesome. Great. One more question out there? I know one of the big concerns that all the group has was about intellectual property and patent. I don't know if yeah. you um, have any um, insight for them as they move forward in that arena. No. Do you want to take that one? Well, so one of the businesses that I have running is a f- visual asset production company, which just simply is a fancy name for um film studio and photo studio so for example yesterday we were out photographing a commercial for a client filming a commercial for a nutritional supplement client and so protecting that intellectual property there's basically like a chain of custody for it and so for the way i've set it up is the intellectual property when you take a photograph you're automatically the person who pushes the button is automatically vested with the copyright and so that intellectual property to be fully protected and to register that with the u.s copyright office and that can take place um it's 35 bucks or maybe 50 bucks now to to register a group of images and so once that intellectual property is registered at the copyright office then you can enforce much more easily your copyright protections which start at for registered images at about $150,000 per infringement an unregistered image is actual damages which typically would amount to one to five thousand dollars per image which is not enough to litigate so I can't speak directly to it protecting intellectual property for your inventions, but I'm assuming that it's important to document the production of this intellectual idea, this property, and to rad- register it at, at the proper copyright office or, or, or patent office, as, as the case may be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I was thinking as, as we were encouraging you guys to reach out to people, um, to, to have your patent stuff in order before you do that, just because uh, I, I do think, you know, 
unfortunately, there are people who would take ideas and maybe run with them. Yeah, yeah, possibly. But I also, I listen to this How I Built This podcast a lot. And I, I hear a lot of people in the early stage, like shopping their ideas around to other entrepreneurs at pitch meetings out at a restaurant at like you go to pitch fest and 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 they are definitely not all protected and 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 so i think there's some kind of balance because at some point you want to you want people to know about it you want people to be able to reach out and help you and and i personally think that most of the people out there are good and 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 they probably won't try to rip you off until you're successful. <laughs> the ones who aren't, aren't, you know, like if you have got an invention, it, they won't try to rip you off until it hits Amazon. And then, you know, somebody, maybe it's in China or somewhere, is going to like, you know, start making one better, faster, cheaper. You know, so at that point, you're definitely going to need um, some protection. And, and, and there's some different stories that are on how I built this, but... I would highly encourage you guys to like check out this podcast because they interview real world people, real world founders who come from not, they, they didn't all go to Harvard. They didn't all even go to business school. They're just like people who started businesses and um, in, most of them who are featured on there like blew up, you, you know, but they're like, th there's a woman who's like called the chicken salad chick. She started a, a restaurant that's called the chicken salad chick. And, and yeah, you, like, I can see people rolling their eyes right now but that's worth 275 million now, you know? So, wow. yeah, right? Wow. It's like, and, wow. and, and, and you can't patent a recipe. She just like made the best chicken salad there was. And like, and like people were just like lining up. Yeah. So, I mean, do what you guys do and do it really well and work hard. Don't give up and uh, write audacious emails to people you respect. Um, Melissa, I'm going to turn it over to you as we get closed. Well, we want to thank you so much for this opportunity. I know I speak for all the scholars um, being able to have a platform where they can um, present and share their ideas and get some information from some entrepreneurs um, out there in the East Village community um, was very nice and very we're very thankful. We hope that we can continue this on as school starts back again. And maybe all the teams that presented today are seniors and seniors, so they'll be graduating this year. But we hope that um, maybe in the fall, they'll be willing to come back and give you an update on the status of their um, project. Sounds good. Yeah, and feel free. Um, I'll pass my email on to Melissa. And so feel free to share that out with the scholars. And I'm happy to. Uh, you know, act as a resource. Appreciate it. And uh, J and O, I, I own. Oh, you guys, uh, uh, startup money. So we'll get that. To, we'll get that to you as well. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, scholars. Do you have anything you want to say as we get ready to leave? Thank you for taking the time to hear our great projects. Our Thank pleasure. You. So in, so inspiring. I, I love to see you guys uh, chasing chasing your ideas and and pushing them forward. You know, it's it's a it's a long walk uphill, but I know you guys are strong enough, and I just encourage you to have confidence in your competency. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, A.K.A. Paul. Uh, bless you, man. Thanks for being a, a huge uh, liaison be between all of this. And Melissa, take care. Uh, we'll talk to you students later, and we hope we can stay in touch. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, scholars, go ahead and sign off. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, y'all. Ciao. Ciao. Yeah.